No wonder when you've got access to facilities like this, free to the public, is it any wonder that Finland is leading the way when it comes to technological advances? Well, here I am inside this monumentally beautiful library. The last time I was in Finland, this hadn't quite opened. It opened in 2018, and it was a gift to the Finnish people to celebrate 100 years of independence. What a beautiful, beautiful library. All citizens of Finland are entitled to library membership here. It doesn't matter where you live in Finland, you can have a membership to this library. This is the Helsinki Central Library, known as ODI. The library is situated in the Kluvi district, close to Helsinki Central Station, and next to the Helsinki Music Center and the Kazmar Museum of Contemporary Art. Despite its name, the library is not the main library in Helsinki. The main library in Helsinki is the less pleasing on the eye, but I'm sure just as resourced, Helsinki City Library. And if you're curious about finding that library, it can be found slightly north of Helsinki Center. A design competition in 2012 to build the library was won by the Finnish architectural firm Alla Architects and the structural design by Rambol Finland. Alla Architects won the commission over 543 other competitors. The library was planned to be a three-story building and to include a sauna which sadly and I think this is due to Covid or possibly other reasons still hasn't materialized in the year 2022. The building also features a ground floor movie theatre. The building features an array of facilities, some of which I'm going to show you today. Wow, this is cool. 3D printers available to use. In January 2015, the Helsinki City Council voted 75 to 8 to launch the building project. The estimated cost of the new library was 98 million, of which the state agreed to pay 30 million in connection with the centenary of Finland's independence in 2017. On December 31st, 2016, it was announced that the new library would be named Odi. The name was selected from a pool of some 1,600 names proposed by the public. According to Helsinki's deputy city director, Odi was chosen because it's easy to remember, easy to say, I think I'm saying it right, and easy to translate. I probably aren't saying it right, so let me know in the comments. The selection jury also did not want to name the new library after a person, hence the name. The library was inaugurated on the 5th of December 2018 on the eve of Finnish Independence Day. In 2019, the International Federation of Library Associations, did you know they had one? Named ODI as the best public library of the year. And as I moved through the magnificent library, I began to see why. This is, this is truly phenomenal. Really, really beautiful. You can even play games in here. This is a gaming room. Nice art. No wonder when you've got access to facilities like this, free to the public, is it any wonder that Finland is leading the way when it comes to technological advances? This is phenomenal. Sadiq Khan in London could learn a thing or two about this. London was shutting libraries. Finland, they're opening libraries. And look at what libraries can be capable of. A little quiet area. This is for meetings. It's super clean as well. We don't have people causing a mess. Look at the recycling. Mixed waste. They take their recycling super seriously. But look, let's see what we've got. Europa Experience, Helsinki Info, workstations, copying, reading room, urban workshop, games rooms, learning spaces, children's materials, magazines, reservations, non-fiction. Wow, look at this. Wow, this is beautiful. This is a proper library. I mean, this is something Finns can be really proud of. Here we have Helsinki outside. I'm not sure if you can see this. This is the Helsinki Parliament over here. Beautiful. 
Thank you once again for joining me in another one of my videos. If you're curious about other Finland content, I produced a Finland playlist. Although this channel is much, much more, as I slowly make my way around our beautiful planet and discover details those who came before us could only wonder about. Coffee shop. I mean, look at this. Do they have every single game known to the planet? Dave Neal would love this place. Dave Neal makes games. Big shout out to Dave Neal. Wow. You want to rent some PlayStation games? Amazing. It's really amazing. What about running in the library? The design of this place gives the public an extension of public space. The contours of the floor change in a similar way to what you would expect them to do when outside. Except here, you're in a beautiful library surrounded by books of the world. Visitors are encouraged to sit anywhere and children are not frowned upon for using the floors as slides. The acoustics of the building mean people can sit and read in peace while others can have conversations without disturbing the entire library. So I'm just on the top corner of this building and what you'll notice about the glass, I thought originally this was the snow stuck to the glass. Further inquiries has told me that there's so many dots in the glass and this is all year round. You step back, you can see out of the window. It basically means they don't need blinds, although they do have blinds up here, but it basically means that you can get natural light all year round. Your iPad, your laptop isn't glared in the sun doesn't become uncomfortable up here, but very, very cool. Oddie has a collection of 100,000 books, magazines, newspapers, sheet music, films, and games. While not as many books as some libraries, that is still a reasonably impressive collection, and the collection includes books in 20 different languages and material aimed at children, young people, and adults alike. Most of the facilities can be booked for free, however, a fee may be charged for reserving the larger event venues, such as the cinema and the multi-purpose hall. But everything else, if you can believe it, is free to use. I really love this staircase. It's, in a way, it's a work of art. What we have here is it's supposed to sort of resemble the helix structure, and the first word is finish for everybody. And then afterwards we get all types of everybody, from the man under the thumb to the goth, even the people that have taken their lives. Any person, any group of people or any individual you can think of goes all the way down this stairwell. I mean, look around, this is really a work of art. Your leaders, if you don't have something like this in your country, are to blame. Because, take a guess how much this cost. This facility cost 93 million and it was completed in 2018. Anything's achievable. Think about the amount of money we've wasted as people on silly vanity projects when we could have had something like this, which the Helsinkians, the Finns have in the capital of their city, right opposite their parliament. Truly inspirational. Into the darkening evening sky, the spruce trees stood festive and sturdy in their dark green clothing, timeless guardians of the slopes. The autumn wind whispered through the treetops and the undergrowth glowed in tones of red and yellow following the procession of the foliage. What I love about this is just the affordability. Like I say, I mean, Finland is generally an expensive country, but the value here, 15 meters per meter, you could take an amazing photo, bring the uh, SD card, and then just get this wonderful print, professionally done, 15 euros a meter. It's truly phenomenal, and I love it. This seat I'm sitting on, fantastic seat, it's a saddle seat. I mean, everything about this place is just kind of special. In London, we have the British Library, which is impressive, but in comparison to this, much less accessible to the public. The average library in London is dilapidated or on the brink of extinction. 
There are a few exceptions to the rule, but on the whole, most London libraries are a disgrace to what a library should be. Many have closed, and the ones that haven't been destroyed to make way for progress in the form of globalism have been turned into idea stores. I could make an entire video on how bad an idea they are. So this is where the Clash of the Clans people set up back in the day, and they still invite people to participate with them. Apparently they've contributed almost just three quarters of a billion dollars to the tax revenue, and it's truly phenomenal. Kitchen learning space, if you want to learn cooking. All these amazing meeting rooms. But what I'm just blown away by is the fact that this place is really well taken care of. There was an experiment to go to see how long this would last because they feared that people touching it, it would, because it's quite delicate. It's the soundproofing for these band practice rooms, which are phenomenal. I mean, the, the equipment in here, I'm not sure we can see through the glass. Um, to show you the standard is top of the range, top notch. In London, if you wanted to use something like this with DJ equipment, you would have to spend hundreds of pounds just to get like a one hour session but here it's free it's all free who says you can't have nice things but this is the difference between a homogenous society which is very trusting of people that respect their environment to a society like what you see in london and i hate to say it because london is my favorite city it's my home but we just don't have the opportunity to have this in london because of the people that show no respect and also the people that I don't know, I just don't, I wonder how long something like this would last in London. If we had something in London of the exact same size, I don't think they could pull it off for 93 million. It would probably cost us three billion or something due to the excessive corruption and the excessive brown paper envelopes that you see in London. But look at this video and audio. I could do my editing in here if I was so inclined to do so. But the soundproofing is amazing, really, really amazing. I'm gobsmacked by this place, absolutely gobsmacked. And it's three floors of just wonder. And look at this, I mean, it's truly marvellous. People come here, they play the PlayStations, wonderful. This Englishman is enthralled by what the Finns have done, and in part, I'm envious that they are able to do this for their people. I don't think I'm wrong on this because when I travel, I try to take in different libraries from around the world. Simple reason, they're good places to go to read a book, to use one's laptop and just to sort of take in a little bit of silence while you contemplate where your next step may be. And I'm yet to find a library in the world that seems to have everything that this one has on offer. Obviously, if I'm wrong, I'd love to find another library just like this or even better. Look at this, on the ground floor, you want to come play chess? Chess set up here. Auditorium over here. Can't get away from the propaganda. There's always a flaw with everything. Despite probably being the best library in the world, they have a little section that's been rented out to the European Union. The European Union apparently, according to the person on the desk, didn't contribute anything to the 93 million that it cost to build this place. Yet despite that, you have European Union stand, which they're paying a little bit of money for now, but also loads of European Union flags outside. The propaganda is strong in this place. I got myself a European Union map. Uh, I got myself a European Union bike visibility thing. And check this out. I'm not sure if any subscriber would like this because I'm certainly not going to be wearing it a European Union face mask uh, leave a comment below if you like this let me know what is this? it's uh, our logo robot is it, but what does it do? it's uh, like logistic robot does it take it takes, what? It takes all those boxes oh wow books and so on no need for humans. <laughs> One day humans will not be needed. But look at this, this is amazing. So if you want to check in your book, put, deposit your book, somehow it scans here, and then it will go through the conveyor belt, and then a robot will take it to the correct floor, which you just saw there. 
It's really amazing. I look at this with an auditorium just on the ground floor. We're opposite. What is this? This is a hotel, a shopping center, probably offices. And then behind us over there is the parliament. Parliament have done well with this. This is the auditorium. Let me know, let me know. Do you think this might be the best library in the world? Or is, this, or is there one better? I mean, obviously you can't really compare it to the libraries that have got you know, millions of books, but they're very difficult to navigate around. They're very difficult to spend relaxing time in here. Here, you've got everything. You've got everything you could possibly want for the 21st century. I'm truly gobsmacked. I went into this library thinking, yeah, it's just another library, but I was blown away. Well, I leave this magnificent library behind with the parliament behind me. I want, I want to generally know what you guys thought about this uh, library. I'll be honest, I'm envious of the bins. I'm envious of the fact that they have this monumentally beautiful building. Maybe aesthetically from the outside, not so, but inside, one of a kind, it's unique, it's beautiful, and I wish every city in the world had something just like this. There's no reason your leaders can't allow you to have something like this. They shouldn't be shutting down libraries, they should be building libraries just like this. Anyway, if you like this content, I'll see you next time.